gave the breakdown yesterday at the fourth DBN annual service ambassadors award ceremony in Abuja. He said the breakdown indicated that a total of 74 billion was disbursed to about 3,696 end borrowers in the manufacturing sector, while 38 billion was loaned to 8,163 end borrowers in the agricultural sector. According to him, he said the disbursements were part of the DBN's um, broader if, uh, efforts to stimulate economic development by empowering sectors that are critical to Nigeria's growth. He also noted that the disbursements have had a profound impact on key sectors such as the manufacturing and the agricultural sector, which are priority areas for the growth of the economy. I was interested because I know last year when the president came in, he, was, he promised 76, 74 billion yes, to 74 companies, a billionaire. So I thought that was what that was. But at least I'm happy that some of these companies are getting this money. Okay. The president is also approving um, relief for tertiary institutions, teaching hospitals that are reeling under huge electricity bills. So he has approved a 50% subsidy for electricity that are used by all by these institutions. This was, um, of course, revealed by the Minister of State for Health, Dr. Tunji Alausa. Uh, he says that, as we know, tertiary institutions recently have been complaining about this really okay. increase. Gargantuan <laughs> <laughs> bills. Gargantuan. Because I'm looking at this, and I'm hearing the University College Hospital um, got a 400 million Naira bill, Ahmed AB Uzari, a 300 million monthly bill. You know, they are just um, huge bills. Um, some public institutions, they say um, University of Nsuka has 3.6 billion Naira in bills mm -hmm. for, you know, University of Calabar, 29.5 billion. Anyway, wow. so our president is saying, you know, let's give them some sort of relief, 50%. And according to the Minister of State for Health, they say, um, he says that, um, in fact, the Ministry of Power is already in conversations with them on how yeah. you know, they can go about mm -hmm. this. But analysts are asking, how is it that you know, we have these group of educated professionals, experts, and they can't work out how to generate their own electricity, electricity. find alternative sources? And also, I think um, the, Mohammed, um, the Buhari administration also had launched at different times, they said, um, some initiative of power supplies to some of these major institutions. What has happened to that as well? So these are questions as well yeah. that have come up. I had a comment there, but let me just leave it there because it's not a hot topic. So um, the infant and maternal mortality rates in the country are unacceptable. This is according to Mr. Shei Tinubu. He said this yesterday, and according to him, he said urgent action needs to you know, uh, take place to curtail the menace by the government and private sector. And um, he expressed concerns over the alarming statistics, noting that in 2023, Nigeria recorded an infant mortality rate of 54.74 deaths per 1,000 live births, a lot of children dying at birth, while the maternal mortality rate in 2020 stood at 1,047 deaths per 100,000 live births. So he started the initiative uh, to redressing the mortality rate. He said uh, that was also launched here yesterday. That's an intervention program that he had started, which was launched yesterday. So the Infant and Maternal Healthcare Intervention Drug Bank for indigent patients and obstetrics and gynecology, pediatric pharmacy uh, came alive yesterday at the Amado Bello University Teaching Hospital oh. in Zaria. He also said that uh, one of the reasons uh, people are, you know, children and mothers are dying at birth is because of financial challenges to be able to buy the prescribed medicines, either when they are sick or during the uh, childbirth at the end of the day. Those are some of the factors that contribute right. to their mortality rate. Now, he said, uh, announced a scholarship uh, scheme for final year pediatric residency doctors, which was supported with one million naira per beneficiary to facilitate their registration and all that and it's you know applauding the hospitals as well to see how they can make sure that everybody <clears throat> who needs it gets it so the federal competition and consumer protection commission moved against profiteers engaging in um the unreasonable pricing of foods and and services across the country um the the ceo that's mr tunji Bello, said this yesterday um he came hard on the unwholesome practice um of market associations they engage in price fixing. So what they observe, they did quite a bit of research. And some of the research, some of the findings they found is that many of, there's a cartel of, um, of marketers. So once these people bring in the, for example, tomatoes from Benue, this cartel um, 
fixes a price and sells at a high price to the marketers. And they now uh, obviously have to then increase their, the prices to the consumers. So they're going to be going hard on these cartel to ensure they don't continue to do this unreasonable pricing. Yeah. Even also, they said that there was some more research that was done such that there was a product, um, Ninja Blend, that was, uh, was, was, is displayed on the shelf in the U.S., I think Texas, for $89, which is about 140,000 naira. And that same blender in Nigeria was running for 944,000, almost a million What's naira. What's going happen? And like, that is a big... Well, that's, that's Nigeria too, like, now. We so know. That, that's like way... way you know, that's like... No, 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 that's, that's like... That's 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 like that is 500% inflation. So usually they usually inflate, but now because of all that's happening, they're overdoing it. Yeah. So he said that's completely... Uh, completely that, that even a week before that, or two weeks before that, that same blender was selling 50,000. So what happened between two weeks ago and this week that made the blender almost a millionaire? So these are things that they well, made. Well, remember when to ship the... it and then all the prices have been... From, but from, still... From 40,000 naira yeah. to a millionaire, that is unfair. That's, That's wickedness, nice highest order. <laughs> okay, moving on to the punch. Okay, <laughs> that's just wicked. Yeah. yeah, simple and short. Simple, wicked. <laughs> the punch, presidential fleet. 200 families displaced as NAF de uh, demolishes houses. Which story here, Ajero honors police summons false terrorism allegation. Botox enlargement doctor declared wanted as client dies during surgery. Hmm. Canada ends visitor to work permit policy. No work, no pay threats won't stop strikes, says resident doctors. Tinubu will case 50% electricity subsidy for hospitals and others. Governor's jobs bizarre. State's wage rise by 900 billion naira. And NYSC bars police graduates without IT experience. Okay, which story? Well, for your daily updates on the uh, NLC president versus uh, Nigerian police, here I am again today. <laughs> the, so the president of NLC, Joe Ajero, on Thursday visited the intelligence response team headquarters of the Nigerian police force in Abuja to honor the invitation. I took that yesterday. So they said he got there at 10.17 and left shortly at 11.15 after giving his statement. Um, he was accompanied by a group of union members and supporters. I also hear the report says in Abia State as well, a group of um, supporters, you know, led um, themselves to um, the police headquarters as well. Remember, they had sent out a circular asking for unionists and supporters to, you know, march to the various um, police headquarters. So they mm -hmm. did that. And uh, before he gave his statement, he still feels that uh, the allegations that of terrorism financing and whatever, as far as he's concerned, they're spurious and attempt to weaken the labor movement. He talked about how this job takes a lot from them. He says that during the Abacha regime, they were, in, they were locked up, you know, he and um, Mr. Fallon. And this is something that you, you go through when you have this sort of job. So, yeah, so he's giving his statement and he's out. And then we will hear. Next update next week, I guess, from the police force. All right, let's go on a short break. When we come back, we continue with our reviews. Stay with us. We'll be right back.